Well, welcome back, everyone. Once again, my name is Ben Glass. I'm an attorney and entrepreneur and dad to nine. And this is the Live Life Big podcast where uh, myself and my law partners get a chance to bring really interesting people in the community in who are living life big. And we kind of just riff and let our viewers listen in a bit on um, on interesting stuff. And today I've got my friend Dixon Hemphill. Dixon is 94 years old. And as I like to say, and he'll fill us in, still making and breaking world records in uh, in track in masters track we ran into each other um, a couple of years ago um and i want to catch up um what you've been doing and uh, because you really do uh, dixon you epitomize the whole live life big attitude that we try to have here so hey welcome back to the to the office and to our new podcast studio well, thanks ben it's just <laughs> nice to be here again so i i got that right well, right 94 you, years old you got it right I'll you got nine- your uh, Loudon's uh, Loudon Street Mile well, uh, running shirt from May of 2019. Did you yep, run in that race? I ran race? that. Yep. Wow. I ran against another 90-year-old, and uh, it was kind of amusing. I don't want to belabor this too much, but we ran against each other uh, three years ago, and you don't often find two 90-year-olds in a race. Right. And uh, he was standing right beside me. We took off. This was a straight run down uh, Loudon Street in uh, Win- Winchester, Virginia. And uh, he stayed right at my shoulder the whole time, and I was just determined to beat him. But we got down near the finish line, and I was afraid he was going to pick it up, so I did. And I just put, put it in top gear, and I beat him by about 10 feet. Good for you. Well, well that was three years ago. Two years ago, uh, we did the same thing. Same thing exactly. The same man showed up. We greeted each other. No, no real smiles, but uh, we took off together. He, he stayed in back of me. And I figured, well, I've done it once, I can do it again. So I did the same thing. Now, this year, we got together, and instead of staying in back of me, he got out ahead of me. And uh, he was standing near the start line, and I was back a little way because there were about 40 or 50 runners there. This was a group of masters from 40 on up. And, of course, they all took off. The two of us were side by side, except he was ahead of me. Well, I couldn't couldn't catch him. I couldn't get ahead of him. I... I might have if I'd just put a spurt on, but I knew that would take some energy. So I just stayed where I was. And we went on, and he uh, got a little hill and then a long stretch down. And as we went up the hill, I noticed he slowed down some. So I thought, well, maybe he's tired. (laughs) So (laughs) we started downhill again, and I picked it up again. I knew if I dropped back too far, I'd lose him. And I stayed about 10 feet behind him. But I got near the finish line again, and I thought, well, I did it twice. Maybe I can do it again. So I did the same thing. I, I seem to have a sort of a second gear. Well, you have this competitiveness <laughs> about you that is unrivaled. <laughs> how, how long was this race? One mile. It was one mile. And just, I know you did the Navy mile last fall. In that's right. J- just under 21 minutes, I think. You know, that was a, f- a, a, a funny situation. I got there late. It's, I won't tell you why we got there late, but we parked in the wrong place, and we had visitors with us who were walking very slowly, and I finally got there. 70-year-old slow walkers, probably. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) visitors from out of town, and I I went ahead of them, got to the race, and found out, uh, got my number quickly and so forth, and I got out ready to start, and I said, where's where's the group? And they said, they've they've left. They've already gone. And the, the starter said, well, he said, if you want to run, you can run, but they've already taken off. So I took off, and that was the reason for my slow time. I was in back of them by, uh, oh, oh, I was a quarter mile or so. I could see them up ahead, but I wasn't about to catch them. Right. That's- this was a group of uh, 70 and over. Well, I came in, and the funny part was the people at the finish line uh, didn't, know that I hadn't started at the beginning. And they all cheered me for coming in and so forth. And they didn't look at my time, fortunately. (laughs) But to make a long story short, uh, this year they told me, uh, last year at the end of the race, that they were going to uh, dedicate this Navy Mile 70 and over to me. So oh, cool. it's going to be called the Hemphill 70 and over this, mile. In, the, the, in 2019? 2019. Oh, well, that's because of all, so, the, all the work and stuff you've well, done in the local running community. <laughs> I mean, here's a guy. So you started running at 50, 50 right? right. That, it actually, is, that's one of your secrets is you didn't wear out your knees I and your hips. I think that is the case. <laughs> I think that is the case. Yep. Hit, hit by a car while, you, while training or mm-hmm. in a race at 74 and had a recovery from that. Right. And uh, 
at 94 still running. Now, is is Orville Rogers, is he yes, still running? Yes, he's still running. He had a little setback. It was a heart problem, and the doctors said, you better back off on this. And he emailed me, emailed me and told me that uh, he was probably not going to be running anymore at 101. He's 101, and he has a heart problem. You know what? But, but If I get there, I'm going to keep running. I'm going to reject <laughs> doctor's orders. <laughs> well, well, he pretty much did that. Yeah. He, uh, the doctor told him that uh, his heart business seemed to be okay, relatively okay, and that he could run. So he will be at a meet in a week and a half that I'm going to. It's out in Ames, Iowa. Oh, cool. And this is another National Masters Outdoor Track and Field Championship. I do these each year. They have an yeah, in, indoor yeah. and an outdoor. So he'll be there. And on Saturday, we're running the 100. Now, ESPN uh, covered it one year. and right. uh, You can see the video. You can go on YouTube and type in uh, your name, and right. there's a video. Right. Yeah. Uh, and there are C now several videos, right. of course. CBS <laughs> covered it the year before. Well, this year, I don't know if anybody's going to cover it. Uh, it's been done twice, and I don't know just what's going to happen. He's not that fast now. And I'm pretty certain I, I'll beat him. Yeah. But after all, he's... Well, let's, let's talk about that for a little bit because, I mean, I, you know, most doctors do not have a patient group that includes 90 and over who are still athletic, who right. are still doing stuff. And, but yet you run around because you, you, you run around, no pun intended. <laughs> um, you know, you, you get together with these other Masters runners. I know from regionally nationally right. and you have some international friends and so talk to us for a little bit either about your own like personal habits and and some of the other guys and gals that you know like what are they doing or what do you think they have done uh either physically you know mentally mm -hmm. to be able to when most people are still are sitting around if they're still alive right but to be able to actually compete and, and run in, into their 90s and, in some cases now, yes. into the triple digits. Right. Well, uh, there aren't very many of us in our 90s that are running now. I, I'd say in the country, uh, I guess would be about eight people, between six and eight people that are 90 that are st still running. And they don't all show up at these meets. Right. Some of them uh, would say they live in California and they w wouldn't uh, travel to the east to run. Some of them don't, uh, they just run in local meets. So there are just a few of us that go into these national meets and that's where I see them. Uh, Orville uh, started running at 50 also. And our careers are quite similar as far as running concerned. His advantage is he's had a doctor looking over his shoulder right. the whole time. It's, it's Dr. Cooper. And Dr. Cooper has a... Uh, He's a renowned, uh, you'd call him a running doctor. He uh, has a uh, track at the hospital where he works, and he, uh, he works with runners. Well, is, this, is he related to? He's not, he's not no, the guy who developed the Cooper test. Uh, I'm sorry? The, he, he's not the, the guy who developed the Cooper running 12-minute test for cardiovascular. Where's, where's Dr. Cooper? Uh, Dallas. It's in Dallas, so it might be, right? I think it is. Oh, wow. I, I think it is. Oh, doctor. cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure that's the doctor. Yeah. So he's well-renowned. He's written books and so forth. So okay. he, he, he looks after Orville. Uh, years back, he, was, he had Orville on a, his annual stress test, and Orville was running along, and Dr. Cooper said, stop. And Orville said, why? He said, get off that machine. We're going to the hospital. He had a heart attack. He, he could tell from the EKG right. that was strapped to his body, right. he was having a heart attack as he was running. He recovered from that completely. He's had several heart attacks. So he has the, the advantage of a <laughs> Okay, so, a so Orville has a doctor, but, but you have a trainer. trainer. I do have a trainer now. And because um, I know you train over at George Mason University, right? right on the, I think you the indoor track there. Right. How old's oh. your trainer? Uh, she's 53, and she's a professional runner. Yeah. Her name is Alicia Harvey, and she's going to this track meet. Alicia, now that's a name that's been, I've heard that name before. Well, she's a professional runner. She's, she went to uh, Robinson High School here. Oh, okay, that's where I've heard it. She went My to, kids go there. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. went to Tennessee, okay. University of Tennessee. She holds American records, uh, many, several American records in age groups, uh, 40, 45. Five, Fisher, sure. and so forth, and uh, she's going out to this meet, and she's been training me some, and it's a real help. It's it's a real help to have a, a coach. 
hundred percent. Yeah, I mean Tiger Woods has a coach. You know, uh, I, I can go on. Has a coach. I can go out on uh, George Mason's two hundred meter track and run as fast as I can by myself. And the next day, she'll be out there and say, okay, run 200 fast. I'll run faster. Yeah. It's because the coach is there and sure. you want to perform well for her. So is she also competing in this? Yes, or she is. She's... No, she's competing in the 800. Wow. Yep. And she, she's got competition. At age 50, there are eight of them, eight or nine. And I think she'll win. I hope. I'm if you, um, well, it, it is interesting because, you, you know, I, I'm doing CrossFit in referee soccer games but in the crossfit world there are you know we have masters divisions and there are, are people if you go on youtube and google crossfit masters um guys and gals much older than i am who are who are pushing really heavy weights can do handstand push-ups right hand walks um uh, toes to bar all sorts of amazing stuff um tell us a little bit about what your kind of workout regimen is these days how okay. often are you getting out there well it's uh three times a week and it's all at mason now uh in the summer when it's not too hot i'll run outside on the track but this year i've been running indoors almost all, all the time yeah. starting last oh september or so and i'll go and i'll stretch first and uh, that takes about five minutes of stretching and then i'll uh run slowly uh, 200 meters around the track and I'll time myself. And that time means something to me because if, if I'm running three minutes one day and the next time I run and I feel about the same and it's 3.30, it means I'm just not quite what I was the day before right. or two days before. I run three, three times a week. I do this easy 200 and then I do a more serious 200. I run uh, to get my heart beat up, and I run about as fast as I can, and I time that, and I have a, I keep a log. I go back. I with remember my that. Log. Yeah, you log all your workouts. I log my times, <laughs> and it's really helpful to look back and see what I did the week before and two weeks before, and I can tell in a minute if I've dropped a lot. And if you're and if you're not feeling well, if you have one of those days where you you're working hard but your time is a lot slower, do you then back off and, and recognize that this is this needs to be another rest day? Yes. Yeah. I do. I do. Uh, a typical, uh, a good workout for me is after I've warmed up is to run a 200, rest for four minutes, run a 400, rest for four minutes, run a 600, rest for four minutes, and then an 800. That's a pyramid. Right, and, and if right. I'm really in shape, I'll go back down again. Yeah. To six, yeah. four, You're and two. Great day. Yeah. Uh, that's a good day. <laughs> what, what do you think you have over the last 10 years? What do you think the learning has been for you? As you get older, and we'll talk, you had a, a cancer scare, and uh, and we'll talk a little about, about falling mm -hmm. and fear of falling. But what's the learning? What what do you want to impart to other people about what you've gotten from your experience? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, just to uh, keep going, uh, I, my outlook on life is, uh, is just to be happy and to uh, have a goal, have a goal. Just uh, something ahead to look forward to. I keep very busy at home. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm building electric clocks now. Oh, cool! I, I'm converting yeah. clocks, uh, key wound clocks, to battery operated clocks. And I started that about three years ago. And uh, I saw a grandfather clock that was running, and I commented to the man. He said, "Well, that's not uh, clock wound. That's got batteries in it." And I found out how to do it. And I bought some of these little gadgets from a company, and I've made about ten or fifteen of these clocks. My, my house is filled with clocks. Cool. <laughs> so you got your shop. You have your clock shop, right? right? Right. And I made friends with a with a clock man in the in Fairfax, and he's given me some old cases. Oh, and uh, I've taken the cases and I put inserts in them, and. Uh, it's fun to do. It keeps me busy. I've got a workshop out in the back in a, what I call my shed, and I've got power tools there. I've got some good tools, and I, I can make just about anything. I make furniture also on occasion. I, I just like to keep busy. I don't know that I know this. I know you're a World War II Navy right. veteran. Um, what did you do professionally? Uh, uh, well, I had th three jobs. First, General Electric Company for 12 years. And uh, I was a sales manager, but uh, I didn't feel as though I was going anywhere. I wanted to 
be a manager, just run something. But uh, I didn't have an engineering degree. They trained me as a sales engineer, but uh, it, had I stayed at GE, I would have been a sales engineer for the rest of my mm -hmm. career there. So I left the company and joined uh, several small companies, but my title was manager, sales manager. And funny as it sounds, that got me places because I would interview for a second job and say I was a sales manager of this boiler company, and they, it, it held more, uh, it, it influenced the right. employer Some more. currency in the title there. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds sort of corny, but that's the way it was. And anyway, I after two companies that had manager, had uh, owners that were <laughs> rather poor, very poor managers, just didn't know what they were doing. I left those two companies, and the second one was down here in this area, and I joined a company on the West Coast, and I wrote them and said, I'd like to be your sales manager for the eastern half of the country. And they took me up on it. So I had that job for seven years. What were you selling? I was selling electric boilers, electric, big big boilers, all sizes of commercial. Right, right. Not residential. And uh, after seven years, I decided that I could go in competition with them. And I hired myself a very good engineer, and I got a contract from a Swiss company called Brown Bovary, and they made a big boiler. And I went over to Switzerland and talked to them, and they wrote a contract that was one page long. It just said that Dixon Hempel is authorized to sell our boilers in North and South America. And he is one of us. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back with the contract. Seeing opportunity everywhere. <laughs> uh, sent, my, sent my engineer, who was a smart guy from General Electric, over to Switzerland. And he sat with the engineers over there and learned more about the boiler and came back. And I bid on a job that my former company bid on, and we got it. We got the order. So for, were you then importing? Yeah. Or no, we built them. You built, you manufactured them here. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it, I took a real chance on that. I took a real chance, but it worked out, and cool. we continue to make these boilers, both big and little, and I did that for ten years, and after ten years, uh, we sold the company. Uh, th th competition got bad. The good part about it when I was building these boilers was that there was an oil shortage. It was in the '80s, mm -hmm. and so electric boilers commercially were quite attractive. So uh, I did sell the company to a Fortune 500 company and it came out pretty well, but I was too young to retire and I just started running, so I opened two running stores. And uh, one in Fairfax, one in Alexandria. Did you know, well, so you had been in sales your professional life. Right. Did you know anything at all about retail sales or you were just no. passionate about? I, I, no. Were, I, actually, you were new to running at that point, <laughs> right? Yes. I, I didn't know much about retail sales. And I wish I'd known more. I wish I'd uh, had courses in uh, economics sure. and finance. I really should have because I didn't watch that bottom of line closely enough. I'd have a great time... Uh, going to track meets, uh, leaving the company in with somebody in charge, of course, uh, traveling all around the country, running. And uh, I uh, would take advantage of, disc of uh, letting Nike uh, not ask for money for an, on a shipment. Uh, I'd extend my payments out to 30 days and then to 60 days. Right. And uh, things got really tight. So I figured it was about time to get out of the business well i mean that's how so, so many entrepreneurs start businesses because they, they like you know making cakes so they start a bakery or you know they're good lawyers so they start a law firm and you know passionate about running and see a space and so hey let's let's start a running store or right running equipment store how hard could that be but it is this you, you do need to know a lot and most of us you know learn it when the school of hard knocks actually that's right and then hang out with folks talk to us a little bit i know you've been married a long time mm -hmm. i've been married uh, some 60 five years. What secrets there? Well, <laughs> I've got a very supportive wife. My wife, June, is a very supportive. She has been all, all our lives. We have four children, eight grandchildren, all living in the area except one. Right. He's up in New York City. And uh, it's just, uh, we've uh, compromised on things. We've uh, 
I, I think the only arguments we've ever had are when we're traveling. <laughs> and uh, I say the road goes this way, and she says it right. goes the other way. Of course, yeah. So, so compromise means you listen. <laughs> you listen first to each other, right? Exactly. Seek to understand. And, but it's been, been yeah. a good relationship. And she's even more supportive now. I think it's because of my health. And she, oh, yeah. she wants me to keep going. I've had a, f a few setbacks. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that for a while because uh, maybe six or eight months ago you were here. Um, we had a chat, and you, I think you were going through. I think you had just been diagnosed. Uh, yes, with, I with was. Type of just cancer, in, yeah. so. Well, it, it didn't scare me too much because prostate cancer is not like some of the other cancers. It's not a fast-moving cancer. And uh, I live in an area where the top-notch doctors, right. the best doctors around. So that makes it good. And uh, I'm very pleased with the treatment I'm getting, and uh, I feel okay. I sometimes think that maybe these shots that I get every three months are slowing me down a little bit, but uh, I can check my log, my running log, and proof, and yeah. see if they are. Well, you so, look good. How do you how do you feel these days? I, I mean, it's hot as as hot as hell outside. It's 98 degrees here in yeah. Fairfax. It's cool in this room today. Right. But how do you how do you feel? I, I feel good. I, I really feel good. Yep. I, uh, my appetite isn't what it should be. My wife's trying her best to uh, get me to eat a little more. I've lost some weight, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but I've lost some weight. But it's because my appetite is not like it should be, like it was two or three years ago. But I can't do much about that. I've lost a little weight. Maybe you've noticed that I've lost. Well, I just thought you were e eating lean and mean, yep. uh, eating eating smart. I mean, you know, <laughs> the, the reality is that uh, I think you told me early, before that you get up every day. You've got your list, your to do list, your right. things that you're you're chasing after. You're getting ready for this uh, Masters National event that comes up uh, in on the thirteenth. I believe on the thirteenth of July. Oh, this month. Very That's soon. just a couple of weeks, and right. it'll be hot there too it right? will be it is hot the good part about that trip is my daughter one of my daughters is going with me and she's going to navigate me through the airports if you yeah. if you've traveled lately I, which i have i went up to my 70th uh, uh reunion at college and i went by plane from dulles and uh, boy i was just amazed at the ups and downs the elevators and trains and so forth dulles is a i think is a tough place from the parking lot to the aircraft is. is a long way it is yeah. a long way um and I, then just the the whole busyness of of air travel my rule of it is if it's if i can get to it in six hours driving yep i'm driving i think that's smart <laughs> when i came back uh, from uh, my college reunion uh, landed in Dulles. As soon as I got off the plane, there were three men with wh wheelchairs, and uh, they looked at me, and uh, <laughs> they said, "You want to ride?" And I was tempted, but I thought, if I if I do this running, yeah. I'm not about to sit in a wheelchair and be pushed around. Not going to get caught on social media getting pushed through <laughs> Dulles Airport exactly. in a wheelchair. Not not this guy who's trying to psych out his competitors that he'll be meeting in a few weeks um, <laughs> <laughs> at nationals. Like, that would not be good optics for no, you. No, right? exactly, exactly. Um, I know that uh, recently you said that the county had reached out to you. Uh, they're doing some work on, you know, on uh, incidents of falls and falls in the elderly and things right. like that. So talk to us a little bit about, about that. What, uh, what are you doing for them? What are they doing with you? And, and what's, well, uh, what would you it, like to do? It, it's ended right now, but I was contacted by somebody, for a woman with Fairfax County, and she said, we're good, doing a documentary on falling. And uh, she said, uh, we know you're an athlete, and uh, an older athlete. And uh, she asked me the question outright. She said, are you afraid of falling? And I thought a minute, and I said, well, yes, I'm afraid of falling. And she said, well, we'd like to uh, interview you, and then it'll go on uh, Channel 16 in Fairfax for three months. So I have a disc here of the, of the documentary, and uh, I'd like you to take a look at it. Yeah, we will. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, it just got me thinking. Uh, it's an interesting subject, and I think more people should know about it. And uh, I think it's important that older people uh, really pay attention so they don't fall, because accidents can happen, and... Uh, yeah, bad things going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I mean, in, 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 we talked about this a little bit because you had some ideas for you know quote older people, but but also, you know, so I'm 61 right. and w work hard at at CrossFit and, and other things, and uh, 
for, for so many people, they they may have been athletic. Of course, they you know in grade school back then everyone did uh, PE. Right. Um, and they're not they're not doing enough today to no. keep the the core and the quads and the hamstrings healthy. I mean that's that's the shame is that um, people don't recognize early enough. That's that right. This is you know you, we work to, we work to make money and have fulfillment in our lives. Uh, and then we go and we eat too much crappy processed food. And for too many people, it, we're, the, and, the lifestyle is way too sedentary. Right, and watch um, too much TV and, and watch, spend yeah. too much time with their uh, cell phones. Exactly right. A lot of it. I, uh, <laughs> I went to a track about a year ago uh, to do a workout, and I was by myself, and the high school students were there, and they came down on the track, and they walked around the track, and I stopped and asked one of them, I said, uh, what are you doing here now? And the fellow said, well, this is my P PT period. And I said, uh, you just, just walk? And he said, well, we're supposed to do some running, but we normally just walk. And they, they walked around once or twice, and then they went back in. Right. And that was their PT. And I was amazed. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and some, sometimes culturally we've made it uh, too challenging for teachers to say, no, you should push yourself. You mm -hmm. should go because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if they come in last or something like that. Right. right. That would be horrible. Um, <laughs> so I know you, 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 have, you have children. You have grandchildren. How old are the grandchildren? Uh, they range from 33 to uh, 14. Okay. 14. So here's my question. Are they taking advantage of having you in the household, mentorship, ideas, philosophy of living, things like that? I think they are. I, what I, do those discussions look like? <laughs> yeah. I think they are. I think it rubs off on them some. Uh, I, I know they're interested. They're very interested. Uh, as indicated by my daughter going out to this track meet with me, I was quite surprised when she said she wanted to go. And uh, but they they are supportive and uh, they're all in good shape, all physically in good shape, and they we have more athletes in our family than we do musicians. Okay. <laughs> in fact, everybody, we have we have no musicians. Everybody has their gifts and talents, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, they play basketball. We go to their games. So uh, my son, one of my sons, uh, was a runner. And he ran a lot. He had a hip replacement a while back. And uh, he thinks that's held him back. But I had a hip replacement mm -hmm. also. And it didn't affect me. And we went to the same doctor. So I think he's kind of using that as an excuse. A crutch, right. But uh, I, I want to see him get back running. So you're, you're 94 now. You're, you're training for this national championships. What, what's your plan? How do you, how do you want this to all play out? Run, well, run like Orville. Run until the doctor yanks you off the um, the track, which and maybe maybe not. Maybe you mm -hmm. tell the doctor no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I have no idea how long I'm going to be running, but I'm running four races out there, and that sounds like a lot, but it's over a period of two days. The first day I run the hundred first with Orville and uh, some other one one other ninety year old and some 80-year-olds, so it'll be about eight of us total. And then uh, that same day, we run the 800. And Orville is running the 800 because he wants to set a world record in it. He holds world records in almost, all, well, in all the distances. As a 100-year-old, year all he has to do is is finish, <laughs> and he's got a world record because nobody else has done it. Well, there's one. There's one of your goals. I'm, I'm sure if I looked in your goal sheet, that's probably there for you too. Right? <laughs> beat Orville when I'm a hundred, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to have to beat him. And then the second day, I run the uh, the two hundred and the fifteen hundred. Fortunately, the fifteen hundred is at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So that's an early race, and I'm glad it's first. So. I'll be tired. From, That'll be an and that's, that's an exhausting run for anybody. Yeah. yeah. I'll be tired from the day before, but I won't be exhausted. I don't think, and the the excitement of running is uh, keeps keeps me going. Keeps any runner runner going. Is there a decent crowd? Oh yes. Well, yeah. no, no, there isn't a decent crowd. There are lots of runners. There are men and women. There'll be about a thousand of us mm -hmm. in Ames, Iowa, at the university, but the only spectators, almost the only spectators, are the spouses. And close friends of the runners, people, and, and maybe some some press. I mean, it's got to yes. be right. Oh yeah, there'll yeah. be some press. Yeah, yeah. 
But that's about it. The stands certainly don't fill. But like like some of the track meets you see, I, I watched the track meets. They just had one last weekend, the Prefontaine in uh, Oregon. Sure. And that was a big meet. And the, the stands were filled. But those are those are world champions. That's they, a, they're yeah. getting ready for the Olympics. That's a little uh, a little yeah. different. What other what other sports? You you, you so you go to your um, kids and grand grandchildren's mm -hmm. uh, basketball. You, you did you ever play golf? Did you? Have I? Yeah. Did yes. you Ever get into it? Yes, I played golf. Not much, but I did. I, when I was with General Electric, we had access to a golf course, and we played quite a bit one summer while I was there. And I liked the game. That's about all I've played. And I played tennis. I played some tennis. I like that. And uh, swimming. I was a lifeguard when I was young. I, uh, that's, that helped me with the triathlons. I did uh, 60 triathlons in addition to 12 marathons wow. and hundreds of road races. What was your, what was your um, last marathon? How old were you? I was, uh, I was 74. That was before my accident. That's... What? I, I th I think I excuse me I I it might I might have been I was no I know I was ninety because I I think it was the Boston Marathon and I had to qualify for that I qualified by running a three forty four at age seventy <laughs> in uh, Virginia Beach that's incredible yeah so that that was a pretty yeah. good time uh, wow. the, the average marathon time now is four four forty I think sure average. oh yeah yeah I mean and, so that was you say in nineteen ninety. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So what would you, for any youngin who's looking at this, what, what, what do you think, what's your overall advice? Because you said earlier, you're a happy guy. Obviously, you stay active. You've got lists of things to do. You've got hobbies, too, outside of, outside of running. Where do you think youngins are going wrong? And if you could be the, the uber sort of parent, <laughs> you know, wise man at the top of the mountain, what would be your advice to them? Well, as we've already said some, I would uh, get them off their butts, get them uh, doing some athletic endeavor of some sort. Uh, basketball, there are lots of programs that kids can get into. Uh, they don't need to try out for the varsity teams in the high schools and so forth, but uh, there are lots of programs. Fairfax County has many good programs. Something for there kids. for everybody. Yep, yeah, for everybody. Absolutely. I'd, I'd advise them to do that. I'd cut back on the cell phone. It drives me crazy to see some of these people. I've, I've even got some friends, and I'll be talking to them, and they'll be looking at their cell phone. They'll be adults doing this, <laughs> right. uh, much yeah. less kids. So I would encourage them to, uh, to be more active, get outside, and uh, do, do a sport of some sort, and, and have a hobby. Just, uh, of course, other things as well, read, uh, I think long-term relationship is important, right? Yes. It's good to have uh, spouse, and also you've got friends, and now you've got friends in the running world um, and, other, you know, other local friends. Right. Um, and, and you have your coach, your trainer. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, many of our friends are dying. I know, I know. It's, uh, so is your competition, but... Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, in our, in, in our 90s, uh, many friends are dying. Yeah. I won't go into detail there, but uh, it's a sad situation, but... Uh, my, my wife and I live in the house, in a house together. We've been uh, in that ho same house for f over 40 years, 50 years. And uh, fortunately, she doesn't want to go to a retirement home, and yeah. neither do I. That's awesome. We just yeah. just don't want to. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it's for some people, but I don't like the idea of uh, going down the corridor into your room and... Uh, having meals with strangers who, who can become friends later and so forth. Fiercely but independent, as long as you can. As uh, long as we can. As long as you don't mind, you know, in the middle of the winter, being able to get the food into the house and stuff. I mean, that's something challenging, like, you know, for my dad. It's like mm -hmm. it's, he's not as old as you are, but it is challenging to go out to doctor appointments, you know, when it's 20 yep. degrees outside. That's a pain. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is a challenge. I see too many doctors, but I, I have to see them. I have folders at home with the doctor's name on them. I think I've got six or eight folders, cardiologist and urologist, and <laughs> the list goes on. They, my probably, wife. they probably bring all the young doctors in to, to see this specimen here <laughs> who's, who's up on the uh, treadmill. Yeah, you know, well, I just went to my cardiolog cardiologist yesterday, and uh, he had a readout, a, a 
the printout for with the, after uh, my blood was taken. Yeah, li lipid panel, and everything looked good. I'm a little a little anemic, a little. He said it's nothing much, and other than that, I'm in, in good shape. And don't listen to any of them that tell you to back off. Just That's, stay on the stay on the track. My right, friend. exactly. Well, Dixon, look, it's great that you uh, spent some oh. time here today. We really want to wish you uh, great luck uh, at the event. So, and I'm sure that media will be there and pick up, and and we'll catch back up with you. Let me let me know. You, I will you email me. Uh, let, I'll, let I'll me know how you're doing. I'll be interested to know if yeah. it does. They, uh, I just have a feeling they might not this time because it's it's happened twice, and it's hard to tell. I, I'll bet you're there. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for coming well, by. Okay, Ben. Well, Good thank, to see you again, sir. Thank you very much. I really yes, appreciate sir. the Absolutely. opportunity we'll, to be we'll here. We'll check out your um, your documentary on falls. Okay. And then maybe there's something else we can do. You know, with training. You, you could do a seminar. Yeah. Because we've got the perfect place for it here. At yeah, the you do. Firm. You really yeah. do. Well, I'm glad you uh, followed up on this. When I first contacted you, I, 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 I saw the type of thing that you were doing. And I thought, well, maybe what, what I have in mind would fit in. And yeah. uh, I just hope it does. Yeah. I, I do want you to look at this. We while, will. Do you we want will. to do it while, while yeah, I'm we here? Yeah, can, we can look before we, uh, it, before it, we go. Bit, Colin. You can do it pretty quickly. Yeah. So let's end this. Again, thanks, thanks for coming on the program. Colin, thanks for being the uh, production uh, manager today. And until next time, this is the Live Life Big podcast where we just get to talk to really interesting people, and we're blessed to do no, so. Thank, thank you, Colin.